Hello, my name is Don Mayhew, and I'm a member of your Lincoln Public Schools Board of Education. Welcome to this broadcast of LPS Live Board Preview. We're using Facebook Live to reach out to the community, give you a chance to get to know your elected school board members a little bit better, and talk about some of the important work that we're doing as a district. Keep in mind if you're watching this live and you have any questions for us, type them in the comments below and we'll try to respond to your questions live during this broadcast. On Tuesday, February 11th, the Lincoln community approved a $290 million bond issue. We are so incredibly grateful to our community and we are humbled by their continued support. Two big items covered in that bond are new high schools, one in Northwest Lincoln and one in Southeast Lincoln. And tonight, we are inviting the public to a special preview of these design concepts. Joining me tonight to talk more about this preview is our Director of Operations, Scott Wieskamp. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, Don. Glad to be here. Scott, I know that you and your staff have spent a lot of time uh, over the last couple of years uh, getting to the point that we're at tonight. Uh, talk a little bit about the process. How did you arrive at the design concepts that we're going to be unveiling tonight? Well, as you know, this process started over two years ago when the high school task force began in the fall of 2017. Uh, the process uh, further developed into the superintendent's facility advisory committee, which met a, a good portion of 2019. All of that input and community discussion really led to the development of what the bond scope would be and the projects within that bond. Uh, it validated the 10-year uh, facilities uh, and infrastructure plan that our staff had put together that had been presented to the board uh, last December as well, but it helped bring all that together to find out what the real needs were of Lincoln and Lincoln Public Schools. And so I, I think we did a good job of staff putting together a plan, but the process really helped validate that. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to, to roll now that the, the bond has passed. We've spent a lot of time touring the country, looking at school facilities throughout the country. Uh, being innovative, the, the things that uh, want to be in future ready schools that we're projecting to plan and move forward with. So let's talk about that for a second. There was a, a lot of uh, feedback from the community. We've done a, a lot of input, a lot of research, uh, talked to many different people, uh, and there were some things that we were not willing to, uh, to, to spend on before we knew whether the bond was going to pass or not. But some of the things that we could do were to look at other schools, uh, ways that other uh, districts are innovating, uh, ways that uh, other, dis other schools are using space, uh, and start to uh, collect that data and uh, get some ideas for what we wanted to do ourselves. Exactly, and so as I mentioned, we did tour the country and we probably looked at 20 different uh, school facilities across the country that had innovative ideas, and it wasn't just facilities and operations staff, we took curriculum staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, met with all of the stakeholders to get what their real ideas and and uh, concepts would be that we could implement into these new facilities. The board took a, a little bit of a risk allowing us to hire the design team last summer and we're very fortunate to have had that time spent in the last seven or eight months with that group to collectively take this information and come up with the designs that we have thus far. So in working with the design team, what were some of the factors that you had to, uh, to keep in mind as you were working towards your design? Well, there's a lot of umbrellas that we look at. Obviously, safety and security is always one. We want to have comfortable learning environments, but uh, being innovative with technology, we know technology really has had an impact on our school, f school facilities just the last five and 10 years alone. Uh, we want to be creative in that aspect. We want to be very flexible that knowing curriculum, curriculum delivery does change over time. So we want our, want our buildings, to, buildings to be very timeless in terms of the way they can interact and react to changes in curriculum. So being prepared for the future, but also uh, being able to, uh, to serve our immediate needs. Exactly. Now, I know that in uh, some of the uh, planning committee meetings we had, uh, you took us through part of the process where you were looking at, uh, at massing uh, studies uh, and things like uh, energy and use of light. Uh, talk, talk us through that a little bit. So uh, just to kind of look at the bigger picture of that, the board approved a sustain sustainability policy in recent months, and mm -hmm. so we've been able to uh, invent or come up with um, ways to implement that within our building designs. And so we have looked at building massing, we've looked at uh, building orientation, we've looked at uh, the amount of window fenestration so that we have very energy efficient buildings. Uh, and not only that, we're starting to integrate that information into student learning. And so our buildings and our sites are learning tools uh, so that they can have interactive uh, videos and dashboards within the building to see how the building's actually performing. And so students and staff may choose to dim lights or turn them off if they think that they're using more energy than, uh, than they would like. So they want to be very interactive and learning tools. 
Now, if I was designing a school, I'd probably get out my graph paper and I'd start drawing squares on it for classrooms or things like that. What you and your staff did, you, uh, you started out uh, first with uh, like these uh, entity relationship diagrams, showing different things being next to other things so that you could get a sense of uh, the proximity that was needed. And then with these massing blocks, uh, also an idea of scale. Right. So, so that's really part of the process. I mean, you really start big, big picture. You look at what, what you need to get accomplished. You set some conceptual ideas of what you want to do. For instance, on the site, we wanted it to be a pedestrian-friendly site, and so then you start to put masses on your site to look at where will you put parking, where, you, where will you put the building, where you put fields, things that pedestrians will use where you're not crossing uh, driveways and the, of that sort. So you look at concepts like that on the site, same way with the building in terms of spaces and relationships where you want uh, certain uh, main hubs or core areas to be adjacent to activities, and maybe you want a different core hub area to be adjacent to uh, the learning portions of the building and so concepts develop ideas that start to turn out to be pencil and paper and then 3d models and that's how it's evolved to what it is today now board members have gotten a sneak peek of what the designs are going to look like uh, and there are some very neat ideas represented in these design co concepts i think uh, what are some of the special features that the high schools are going to include well i think uh, I think there's a lot of innovative ideas based on, again, our tours across the country. And so we didn't really find a building out there that said, aha, this is the building for Lincoln Public Schools in Lincoln, Nebraska. But we've looked at a lot of things where co-curricular teaching is starting to happen, where a lot of teaming, a lot of small groups, innovative uh, breakouts of students within certain curriculum are starting to happen. And so those types of things are being implemented into our facilities. The library is no longer a room where you go through a door and, and you're so-called in the space. The library is a major hub. Lots of activity takes place there where you can kind of flow in and out of that space uh, throughout the building. It's really the main core of our building design today. So things like that have really started to show up in our new building design that gives us flexibility for the future. One of the things that uh, you've talked about and we talked about in uh, planning meetings was the idea that we are using LEED certification as a, uh, as a guideline uh, for, uh, for going green, for being green. Exactly, and so we use the LEED checklist and we use that process in, in making decisions. And I think an example that I shared with the planning committee is uh, like electric vehicles. And so there is a LEED point that's available if you have like 1% of your parking stalls where you can plug in and charge an electric vehicle. Well, the demand is not there today to put in 1% of 1,000 stalls, but we are going to have charging stations available, but we just aren't going to make the lead point. So we're really looking at every possible uh, green or lead type of a, a, a formula to, to meet those needs, but we're not meeting them 100%. Now, you explained to us that uh, your staff has had uh, over 100 meetings uh, with, uh, with different stakeholders across the district. Uh, you've met with curriculum, security, who else have you talked with? You know, not only has it been internal to LPS, food service staff, computing services staff, uh, even uh, service custodial, you know, uh, all of the LPS teams have been involved, but we've also engaged the health department, Lincoln Fire mm -hmm. and Rescue, Lincoln Police Department, so many outside agencies that would have an impact and an interest of what our buildings look like and how they operate. Uh, and then also uh, principals, uh, band teachers, uh, the, uh, the uh, drama, drama folks, uh, obviously athletics, uh, all of them have had a chance to come in and uh, to give you input. Exactly, and, we, and they've even participated in many of the building tours, and so we've asked them to dream big, and we know that that adds to what a building scope might be, but no different than the board having to compromise on what the end result of the bond issue would be. Mm -hmm. uh, as a team, we also have to compromise on the final solution, and so we all give and take a little bit, and in the end, it'll be a great facility. It'll still be uh, another LPS high school that, that allows opportunities for every student to participate in any type of activity or athletic event, um, but it'll give them all the same opportunities at these two new buildings that we have at all of our existing high schools. Neat. So tonight we're going to be uh, unveiling to the public our current thinking, our current design concept. Uh, what then is the next step? So next step is continue to move forward on design, but we actually have a bid package ready to go out the door next week for grading on the first high school site in northwest Lincoln so if everything moves accordingly we'll be moving dirt on that site by early April uh, if the weather permits. 
the bond is passed and now the, the work uh, the work begins. The work begins. All right. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for your work in getting us to this point. I know that uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting feedback from the community once they have a chance to uh, see the design concepts today. Uh, if you are curious and you have a chance, you can come out and walk through the preview at our district office from 5 uh, to 6 o'clock tonight at 5905 O Street. Also, we'll have the design concepts later tonight on our website at www.lps.org. Uh, keep in mind that uh, in a couple of hours, we'll be starting our regular board meeting at 6 o'clock, and if you like, you can watch that live also on our website at www.lps.org. Also on TV, Allo Channel 23, Charter Spectrum Channel 1303, or Windstream Channel 1080. With that, again, my name is Don Mayhew. Thanks for watching.